Hey, gaming industry, can you stop with this pretentious soft reboot trend you're doing by naming the most recent entry in a series the same as the first entry, especially when the story is a continuation of the same main protagonist? Call it anything else. God of War, Dad of War, Boy of War, Old Man Kratos, The Adventures of Atreus Electric Boogaloo, The Last of the Witcher Elder God of Scroll Wars, Wild Hunt for the Tomb Raider of Horizon Zero Skyrim Dawn. Literally anything else other than God of War. It's stupid, it's silly, stop trying to confuse everyone. But as I've said before, I have no shame in admitting when I'm wrong. This game turned out a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Sony exclusives might all fundamentally play the same, but I gotta take a well-crafted complete single player game with absolutely zero zero microtransactions or season pass while they still exist. Kratos, the all-powerful godslayer, has trouble chopping a tree, which becomes even more perplexing when later on he flips a damn temple upside down. This game is pretty much confirming all the concerns I had about it before release. Cutscene, walk forward, cutscene, walk forward, dramatic music sprinkled here and there, plus a father-son dynamic, and boom, you got your game of the year. Unfortunately, this is one preconceived notion in which I was absolutely correct. I see that Santa Monica has been taking tips from Ubisoft and implementing the dead parent for motivation cliche, seeing as how the main objective of this game is to take the ashes of Atreus' mother to the highest peak of all the realms. That's it. I mean, sure, there's a 33-hour journey between now and then, but by the time I got to the end, I was thinking to myself, oh, we went through all of these obstacles just for this. <laughs> Snowy wood does not catch fire that quickly. Atreus, I know you're a kid. Might want to wait till after she's been cremated before you grab that knife. Game tells me to hunt with Atreus when Kratos just told him that he was going to hunt alone. What are we hunting? You are hunting deer. What are you doing back there? The hunting grounds are this way. Action adventure game featuring heavy amounts of exploration still feels the need to prevent me from exploring. Kratos can jump gaps, but he can no longer double jump. Attack commands on the shoulder buttons, somewhat sluggish and toned down gameplay, this third person locked on camera angle. Look, I know this is going to come as a shock to some of you, but Dark Souls is not the pinnacle of action combat. May I humbly direct you to the corners of Devil May Cry, the original God of War games, Ninja Gaiden, Onimusha, God Hand, Monster Hunter, Metal Gear Rising, and Bayonetta. For games that not only require skill, but actually have some style and or a wide variety of combos to perform. Thank goodness you can at least change the button prompts back to the classic style, but my point still stands. This Dark Souls type of combat is not the be all end all. I think it's high time everyone stops pretending that it is. The rule of three cliche permeates this game, so much so that instead of going through each one of them individually, I'm just gonna go ahead and add 20 sins. There are more chests in this game than loot boxes in an EA title. Gotta admit, I wasn't expecting the explosive red barrels that only exist to advance the gameplay. But then again, it's one of the oldest video game cliches, so I shouldn't be surprised. Game makes a failed attempt to pile on the emotion when the entire point of this opening sequence is to hunt down this deer. And Kratos has mentioned that multiple times. And it eventually becomes a waste of time since a troll takes the deer and robs us of our meal. Speaking of the troll, it's the first boss fight in the game, if you can even call it that. Honestly, I'd feel insulted if it's considered a boss, because I remember fighting the likes of the Colossus of Rose at the beginning of the second game, and freaking Poseidon himself at the beginning of the third game. I haven't been sick in a long time. Well, bad enough that you have the dead parent cliche, but now you also include the sick child cliche. A predicament, I might add, will only be addressed in one mission and then will never be brought up again. The path home is this way. Duh. Duh? I think that word is a bit too modern for you, boy. <sighs> for shame. All the detail in this game and you couldn't program wind chime physics. You lost control. That thing was trying to kill us. It's not like you don't get angry in a fight. Except you got angry after the troll had already been killed. Anger can be a weapon. If you control it, use it. You clearly cannot. Athena! Stay out of my head! Is this all you would have me do? Ares! I have stomached their betrayal for the last time! Athena! You conspire against me! I will have my revenge! Do not deny me my revenge! You were saying? What do you want? Oh, you already know the answer to that. Um, not really. I mean, you could ask Kratos for specifics, but then that would be spoiling a plot twist that happens later on. So instead, enjoy this god who likes to be vague. You do not want this fight. Oh. <laughs> I'm 
I'm pretty sure I do. So, what was that about being diplomatic again? Just tell me what I want to know. No need for this to get bloody. Oh, you can... Uh, I don't have time for this. Says the guy who started this fight. Hey, game, if you're gonna have a lock-on function, maybe not have it give up so easily. Even if I didn't have knowledge about Norse mythology, there is no way the game was going to fool me with this act. You never fight a powerful foe like this at the beginning and then that be the only encounter you have with him. Whoa. How did this happen? Oh, come on. Do you really think that it was anything other than the brawl your father had with the stranger that briefly took place on top of the cabin you were hiding under? Game somehow manages to make climbing more monotonous than it's ever been, a mechanic that has been perfected by numerous games years prior. Puzzles where you hoist Atreus up and he does something while you do something else. Boy, I sure enjoyed these puzzles a lot more when there was platforming involved and double jumping. That is the most gorgeous JPEG background I have seen in a modern video game. The fake ass narrow crevice loading screen. See? Ah! Yeah, totally didn't see that one coming. Level based enemies are one of the worst design choices in modern video games. I mean, sure, you play as Kratos, someone who has killed numerous gods in the past, but if you come across a regular Draugr that just so happens to be a few levels higher than you, it can easily one shot you, regardless of your skills, armor, or abilities you've unlocked. Not stupid game design at all. Atreus becomes distraught after being forced to kill a man, even though Kratos had already warned him not to feel remorse for anybody. On our journey, we will be attacked by all manner of creature. Close your heart to their desperation. Close your heart to their suffering. Do not allow yourself to feel for them. They will not feel for you. Can't get this slow-eyed cock lump to cross the bridge. Well, it ain't too often you come across a character that sounds exactly like one of your parody RPG characters. I almost can't tell the difference anymore. You're not gonna believe me, but that axe you got, uh, it was me what made her. Me and my brother. Well, somebody ring the bell of convenience. Armor upgrades. Like, why? This is the same Kratos that practically killed the entire Greek pantheon wearing nothing but a skirt and sandals. And you're gonna try to convince me he needs armor to protect himself? Especially when he's already demonstrated to have Wolverine healing factor in this very game? Pull your way till we go home. But wouldn't that go against the entire point of the game? Normally I'd send this for being a repeated boss fight, which it is. But as I said before, I feel insulted calling this a boss fight. The Valkyries are the real bosses of the game, and they're not even part of the main story. So I'll count that as a double sin. Atreus! Atreus! Ah, I see we've come across the press X to Jason moment. I'm about four hours into this game and I have seen a distinct lack of a threesome minigame. This is a God of War tradition this game is unceremoniously omitting. God of War Surgeon Simulator. The hypest gameplay on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. I know you're a god. Not of this realm, but there's no mistaking it. And somehow Atreus doesn't know about this, despite him witnessing his dad display incredible amounts of strength on multiple occasions. The gods of these realms don't take kindly to outsiders, trust me. Which becomes even more confusing when we find out later that Tyr had collected artifacts from different pantheons, and the fact that Odin himself craves knowledge that would help save him from Ragnarok, which would require him to travel to different realms, thus kind of making him an outsider. I also need lamb's crest, do you mind? It's a white petal flower in my garden. Just a handful. Fetch questing. This mark will hide you from those who might make your journey difficult. Apparently Freya didn't get the memo that she's in a video game and that we will attract the attention of many undesirables, such as the Sons of Thor. Gameplay wise, one of the biggest sins is that we never actually get to fight the World Serpent. Now that would have been a boss battle for the ages. Instead, we're relegated to fighting trolls, ogres, and Conor McGregor's distant ancestor. The water dropped. And the serpent rose. Rather astonishing that the world serpent knows exactly how much of its body it needs to remove in order for the water to subside to these levels. And it won't be the only time this occurs. If it isn't the bearded beaver in his sack seed, have I got something for you too? Despite the temple being submerged literally seconds ago, Brock has already appeared and set up a fully operational shop. I mean, yeah, I know the game explains later on that it's due to dwarven magic, but even I have my limitations on excuses that I will accept. Brock? But how did you- None of your fucking business! Now get in here, I got something for you! Ladies and gentlemen, you just witnessed one of the most blatant attempts of a video game circumventing your disbelief and flipping you the bird while doing so. An action I can respect, but must sin nonetheless. Catch! 
The pile of rocks there? With that key of Yggdrasil, you can open a magic door to the branches of the World Tree. A shortcut between the realms. Rux says you can use this key as a shortcut between the realms. However, for now, you can only use this one way, bringing someone back to his shop. And even after the Bifrost is restored, you can't actually use these doors between the realms without going to the realm travel room. Video game cliche number 10, destroy or in this case free for of anything to progress to the next objective. Been a while since I've seen that one, probably for good reason. Look, it's the world serpent. He's so much bigger than I imagined. Yet you have already confirmed its size and witnessed it firsthand. Step aside. I can't. See the woman we made it for? I was, uh, well, I am quite fond of her, and I would be somewhat displeased if it turns out that you did something to her. Oh, Sindri, you delightful little dweeb. Not too many characters out there that'll threaten Kratos knowing damn well they'll get destroyed. All in the name of respect for Faye. Now that's the kind of passion worthy of a sin reduction. It was my mother's. She left its father before she died. Faye's dead? I'm very, very sorry to hear that. She was a fierce warrior, and a good woman. See? Now this is proper storytelling. Provide crucial information of an important character through dialogue interactions of those who have shared experience with said important character, all without ever resorting to using flashbacks. Look, I understand that the game needs to compress its landscape for a more diverse quasi-open world, but I can actually see the line where the forest ends and the snowy mountain begins. What is that? We must find another way up. This game should really be called God of War, a series of unfortunate events for how many times your main objective inexplicably gets impeded. The witch! Wish she was here. Bet she could get us past this. My magic is useless against the Black Breath, and there's no way around it. With her magic and perfect timing, Freya has mastered the art of off-screen teleportation. Why would you warn us? I was busy, saving my friend. If you remember. You had plenty of time to warn them about the Black Breath while they were at your cabin. You only did so now because the plot demanded it. The Black Breath is a corruption of magic even I can't dispel. Only the pure light of Alfheim is strong enough to break through. Then perhaps Odin should have blocked off access to that realm like he did these others so that this objective could not be completed. But I'm guessing those realms are going to be saved for the sequel. Wait there while I reawaken the light. Leosta. This is what happens when your game is limited by context-sensitive prompts. There is no legitimate reason as to why Kratos couldn't reach across that gap. The tree of life is bound to the fate of the world. Then you've got yourself quite a plot hole, seeing as how Kratos already killed the Sisters of Fate in his own mythology, and we find out later on that Tyr had visited different locations with their own pantheons, including Greece. You can't share pantheons and expect consistency when fate had already been destroyed in one, and all the mythologies have their own origin of how the world began. Every Every realm has a travel room that unlocks the bridge to that realm. I'm giving you the one for Alfheim. Norse travel rune is the same as the Greek letter Omega. Perhaps this adds validity to all the pantheons coexisting in unison after all. No. No, no, no. Damn it, not yet. What's happening? <laughs> to restore the Bifrost magic, you must step into the light. Freya, who has already said that there were measures being taken to keep her in Midgard, not only brings herself into Alfheim, but failed to mention the obstacles of the Black Breath, the lack of light needed for the Bifrost, and waited until she was being yanked back to Midgard to tell Kratos and Atreus about stepping into the light. Oh, how could I ever comprehend the horror of seeing my child in peril when nobody ever bothers to attack him? Tension. What is it? Man, if only I could determine what the weak spot is. Ah! 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 The Dark Elves have been attacking Kratos and Atreus ever since they got past the Lake of Light, yet decide not to do so now when they're getting close to the actual light of Alfheim, even when their voices can clearly be heard. A narrow path negates superior numbers! Uh, Kratos? Spartan tactics only work when your enemies can't fly and surround you. Only use it as a last resort. Atreus does not need your axe to defend himself. He already has a bow with infinite arrows that he could just spam with little talent or effort. He can essentially Hanzo his way to victory, which he ends up doing anyway. An old demigod dies, a young demigod lives. 
fair trade. Not quite a flashback within a hallucination cliche, but close enough. The carry the blue crystal puzzles. Just the most riveting gameplay you will ever encounter. Oh no, the boat isn't here. It's still back at the other side of the lake. We really gotta go back down here again? Do you see any other way? Well, you could swim in that body of water right next to the lift, but that would require too many animation resources. Keep your expectations low, boy, and you will never be disappointed. You know, I can appreciate it whenever a video game character speaks the truth. A lesson to be learned, not only when it comes to gaming, but life in general. Definitely worthy of a sin reduction. So I should keep my expectations low, but always expect an attack? It is a delicate balance. Expect the worst, assume nothing, and always anticipate an attack. Man, it's like Kratos is after my own heart. He's so wise that I momentarily think he's a completely different character. Well, look at that. The Mass Effect elevator decided to make an appearance. We're almost at the summit. Nothing's gonna stop us. The tempting fate trope. It takes several hours to finally feel like a God of War game. Can you kill something that big? <laughs> Are you serious? What are these? Braided mistletoe arrows. Sindri might as well have just said, hey guys, here's the item you need to beat the game. Please enjoy this razor sharp god slaying world ending Chekhov's gun. That sounds like the same man who came to our house. You said you killed him. Shh. Um, not exactly, kid. He said he did what needed to be done. Did you kill him? I did what had to be done. Context matters. The tattooed man. Tracks show he now travels with a child. Where would they go next? Balder does not need to ask this question, seeing as how we later find out he was looking for Faye the entire time. So either Odin made a glaring omission by not describing Faye's appearance, or that whole dialogue during the first confrontation with Balder was a massive red herring. Either way, it's a sin. They call me Mimir, smartest man alive. And I have the answer to your every question. Why does the son of Odin hunt us? Okay, there are a few gaps in my knowledge. Just when you thought Mimir was like Google, he turned out to be Hotbot. He tortures me, you know. Every day, brother. Odin himself sees to it personally, and believe me, there is no end to his creativity. Whoa, 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 hold the hell up. If Odin sees to Mimir's torture personally every day, how the hell is he not aware about everything that's going on right now? Magni even said at the end of their conversation that they're everywhere. Don't you forget, we're everywhere. We really are, aren't we? In that case, Odin and company should not have any problem locating Kratos and Atreus. And even if Odin appeared after Mimir gets beheaded in a moment, he should be putting all the realms on high alert, since Mimir is the only person left alive who still has the gift of sight from the giants. First, you need to cut off my head. I'm going to cut off your head now. Ha! Ah, now that's the kind of deadpan humor that actually makes me like this version of Kratos. Who knew you could change my opinion with a delivery of one line? Do you remember the way to the witch's house? Boy, what is the path back to the witch? Do you remember the way back to the witch from here? That is three times Kratos has asked basically the same question. Seems like his short-term memory loss is worse than mine. Wait. Where did you get those? The arrows. Give them to me. Now. These arrows are dangerous. They're wicked. You find any more, you destroy them, understand? Do you understand? Say it! Freya's outburst heavily implies that she knows about the dangerous effects of mistletoe, even though the whole point of the spell she blessed Balder with was to make him invulnerable to all forms of attack, physical or magical. So she must have found out about mistletoe after she blessed Balder, in which case I would think she'd roam all of Midgard and search for all traces of mistletoe to destroy them. Either way, none of this is confirmed, so I'm counting it as a sin. Also, Freya demands that Atreus relinquish his arrows, yet doesn't notice the mistletoe shard placed in his quiver on his chest. Do you have any idea? who this is? Did you kill him? At his request. He claimed you could revive him. Uh, technically you were the one who suggested Freya could revive him. There's a witch of the woods. She knows the old ways. It's been a long time since I've practiced the old magic. And yet it'll require less effort than what it took to revive your shape-shifting boyfriend. When word gets out that Mimir is free, the wrath of Odin won't be far behind. See, that's what I thought. But apparently the wrath of Odin only consists of Baldur, Magni, and Modi, all of whom were already looking for Kratos and Atreus. Forseti never appears, Thor is being saved for the sequel, Hell never shows up, and as we later find out, Sigrun kept the Valkyries away from Odin. <laughs> You 
You know, for the longest of times, I wondered what an Inception blah machine looked and sounded like, and this is pretty much what I expected. God. Damn it, man. This is the one game where I didn't want to experience any glitches because of how polished it is. Shoot the blade for this sort of flame for one purpose alone. To burn down Asgard when Ragnarok comes at last. And we'll pick this up later. I absolutely love this. Whenever Mimir is telling a story and you dock yourself in a location, he'll wait until after you've finished business and leave before continuing the story. I always say that details are important and now you know why. The little things matter. How are we getting down there? I have a plan. You do? Do not act so surprised. Oh, no offense, brother, but I don't even think Thor with Mjolnir in hand could get through that much ice. Then Thor is a fool. And so is Mimir for not only underestimating the power of Mjolnir, but overestimating the stability of ice. It's ice, and ice can be broken, especially when we're dealing with the power of gods. Here, catch! Now that's funny. Kratos is already so high on the asshole pyramid that he doesn't even need an apple to look like one. It's almost as if he's aware of the cliché. However, Atreus is not above eating an apple to let you know how much of an asshole he's going to be. These Bigby Wolf Crash Bandicoot pricks. Hurry brother, we may get a piece of the chisel and be gone before they even notice. Ah, I see the boy is not the only one who is a fan of testing their own luck. You know, there aren't many boss fights in this game, but this one is exceptional enough to where I'll take off a sin. Besides, how many other games out there allow you to beat the shit out of characters voiced by Troy Baker and Nolan North at the same time? Wow, kids. Mother must have been some war to play with the last of him. Oh, really? We're resorting to your mom insults, huh? Well, never thought I'd come across another unlocking mechanic as bad as Skyrim, but... I did. Kratos, who has already defeated Magni and Modi, and also withstood the punishment of the much powerful Baldur, still gets immobilized by lightning. Somebody just called the serpent. Which is odd, seeing as how the world serpent talks in a dead language that only Mimir can speak and understand. Wouldn't make sense for it to be Modi since he just got defeated again. And it's not Baldur because he fights the serpent later on. So the whole ordeal of Atreus' illness is that he believes he's 100% mortal. But I'm wondering why he thinks that when he wouldn't even know what a mortal is. Everything up until this point has been a monster of some kind, and his dad has shown multiple times that he's incredibly strong. More so than any mortal could have been. Plus, he's quite observant and knowledgeable to the point where he should have picked up on the signs that he's not 100% mortal. This rune opens the bridge to Helheim. So we can just enter hell that easily, huh? Kratos doesn't even have to die this time. Freya still doesn't notice that piece of mistletoe on Atreus's quiver. And all the time Kratos has been in Midgard, his home was just a little downstream from Freya's. Yet they only had their first encounter recently, which becomes even more puzzling if you took a glimpse at that prequel comic. I'm not gonna lie, seeing the Blades of Chaos again was legit one of the hypest moments I've had in a long time. So much so that I'll take off a sin. They were were kept away long enough for you to miss them, so that when the time arrived, getting them back would feel fulfilling. But I do have to question how and why they're in his possession, seeing as how Ares stripped them away at the end of the first game, and keeping them would only further remind him of the slaughter he committed against his former family. There's nowhere you can hide, Spartan. Ah, bringing back the original voice actor for Athena. Kinda makes me wonder why you couldn't do the same for Kratos himself. Sweet Nana's nethers. What are those? Brock, this is really not the game for you to be using shitty memes. Let me take this moment to tell you that what you are about to do is absolutely insane. Not even Odin can survive this cold. Then Kratos is gonna have a pretty easy time against Odin when the later installments release because he can survive perfectly fine. Get over here! The Bridgekeeper boss turns out to be just another troll, and not whatever the hell this thing is. Did I tell you that I have a son too? If you were planning on that being a big reveal, then you kind of failed. You did say you would take care of the boy. That's a mother's promise. I will keep him safe. That's a mother's promise. When I came to these shores, I chose to live as a man. But the truth is, I was born a god. Actually, you had to kill Ares at the end of the first game. Then you attempted suicide when the gods wouldn't erase your nightmares. Then they saved you to serve as the new god of war. And then you became a god. Alert! Gameplay inconsistency. How are the Winds of Hell contraptions in Tears Vault if the only way to transfer the Winds of Hell are through the Blades of Chaos? Which were made possible because of Brock who had no idea the Blades even existed. And which Kratos had kept hidden underneath his home for quite some time. Saving the hero in the nick of time cliche. This game actually pulled some DMC Devil May Cry color-coded enemy only vulnerable to one type of weapon bullshit. 
There are consequences to killing a god! Well, you didn't seem to suffer many consequences when you killed practically the entire Greek pantheon. Sure, you caused a worldwide apocalypse, but in doing so, you inadvertently saved mankind from the grips of the Olympian gods. Quite the pride and accomplishment, if you ask me. Two different pieces of wrist armor share the exact same appearance, even though one is epic and the other is legendary. Speaking of the rarity system, the color codes in this game are incorrect. It should be green, uncommon, blue, rare, purple, epic, Legendary, variation of orange, yellow, and gold. It's a simple concept. Stick with it. Kratos and Atreus have spent an entire game trying to reach Jotunheim. Now that it's in arm's reach, they waste just enough time for Baldur to show up and interfere. You may not notice it because you might be too focused on the fight between Kratos and Baldur, but the dragon is actually looping around the map of Midgard. All the more telegraphed when Kratos Captain America is his way back to Tyr's temple. Oh, okay. Wasn't aware I was playing God of Gravity Rush. You will listen to me and not speak a word. I am your father, and you, boy, are not yourself. You are too quick to temper. You are rash, insubordinate, and out of control. This will not stand. You will honor your mother and abandon this path you have chosen. It is not too late. Now this is a masterful piece of work. Kratos, of all people, disciplining his son without ever once resorting to violence. This is the kind of character growth I can support. Freya is his mother. Why did you keep this from us, Head? Would you believe it slipped my mind? No, but I can believe it's because the plot didn't call for it yet. That sounds a lot more plausible. Earlier, Freya said that Helheim is a place where no fire can burn and no magic would work. It is a land of unyielding cold. Fires cannot burn there, and no magic in all the Nine Realms can create a blaze. Yet these piles can clearly be set ablaze to keep this boat sailing. Face me, Father! It is time to end this! Yes, my son. It is time. Man, Kratos from God of War 3 is sounding a lot less TC Carson than I remember. First person point of view during a flashback within a realm meant to torture its inhabitants. Hey, this is the first time for everything. I have a plan! Jump! Your plan was to jump? Even though that was your only option anyway? Look at that! It's the missing panel about Tyr! Whoa, whoa, hold up. If this is Odin's secret chamber, and he has the missing panel about Tyr's visit to other pantheons, and he craves the giant's gift of prophecy, why didn't he use Mimir before imprisoning him to reveal Tyr's travel through the realm between realms, since Odin knows Mimir possesses the giant's gift of sight? And then, I don't know, cast a spell on Mimir like he did with Freya so that he would never tell anyone about it? Remember when people complained about the fourth act in Shadow of War, how it was nothing more than a boring, tedious grindfest? That's pretty much Niflheim in a nutshell. This runic summon only searches for consumables, and has a 167 second cooldown. Great Aldumblazadas, that's the Unity Stone. You know it. I wasn't sure it existed. Mimir, smartest man in the world, knowledgeable in all artifacts and conflicts, wasn't sure that an important stone existed. That's it, I understand now. It shows Tyr walking the realm between realms. Oh, you mean the same technique that Sindri's been able to pull off? You can be invisible? More like I can step into the realm between realms, and your mind doesn't understand what it's seeing, so it sees nothing at all. The same dwarf that has been omnipresent throughout most of this game? Strange how you need the Unity Stone to do exactly what he's been able to do most of this game. Hey guys, question for you. Anyone know where we can find Mimir's other eye? But... <clears throat> I'm sorry. As a matter of fact, Odin asked me to- Dude, you've already gotten your hands dirty picking up a quality piece of scap slag. Your vomiting act is already tired and overdone. Well lads, I don't know what lies ahead, but now would be a good time to make sure your gear is ready for the worst. Anything you need to do, I'd do it now. Translation, complete our damn side quests, you fucking peasants. Otherwise, we won't allow you to progress any further because you'll be artificially underpowered, even though you are Kratos, the aptly named God of War. Ah, uh, he thinks it might still be in his stomach. Um, and he's open to letting you go into his mouth to look inside. The stomach acid from the World Serpent would have eroded the statue already. And even if that wasn't the case, it's the World Serpent, which spans the entire globe. It would have been rowing in there for weeks, possibly months. Also, this section is basically a lesser version of the Riftworm level from Gears of War 2. Finally, we're going to Yudna. There's no stopping us now. Laddie, have you ever heard the town tempting feet? Clearly not, because neither of you two seem concerned about how shitty your luck is. Oh god! What's going on? What's happening to it? Nothing good! Hold tight and watch your balance! 
Well, looks like Balder is a fan of video game cliche number five, hitting a boss with three major strikes to take it down. I think he was onto something here. Oh, back off, Kratos. This has nothing to do. Uh, I don't recall Kratos ever revealing his name to Freya. Hey, look, that piece of mistletoe that was clearly visible on Atreus's quiver ends up being the undoing of Balder. Oh, come on. Did you really put in a final boss that needs assistance in a 2018 video game featuring gods? In true God of War fashion, the final boss ends in a father son tag team quick time event. Well done, boy. Not gonna lie, that was kind of awesome. Praise be to Snack. The cycle ends here. He says right before killing another god, something that he's been doing since the very first game. And yes, I do understand the context of what he's saying, that he doesn't want the cycle of sons killing their parents to continue, but my point still stands. If you really want the cycle to end, you'll start by setting your own example of not killing any gods. But that's not gonna happen because that would defeat the entire purpose of this series. So you'd let me kill you? If it meant you would live. Yes. Not so subtle foreshadowing. I have nothing more to hide. Except you have yet to tell Atreus that you're covered in the ashes of your former family, and that you killed them yourself. It kind of dilutes the game experience when you find out that everything you've done so far was predestined. So, chopping down the tree that broke their protection stave, hunting the deer, the first confrontation with Balder, encountering Brock, hunting the boar that eventually led to Freya and the turtle cabin, exploring the Lake of Nine, meeting the world serpent that eventually revealed Tyr's temple, completing all the side quests along the Lake of Nine, meeting Sindri, coming across and being stopped by the Black Breath, going to Alfheim and retrieving its light to dispel the Black Breath while freeing the Light Elves in the process, fighting a dragon, reaching the summit, meeting Mimir, decapitating him, bringing his head to Freya to revive him, finding out that Freya is a god who was married to Odin, going to Thamir's corpse to retrieve the magical chisel that helps open up realm travel to Jotunheim, fighting Magni and Modi, going to Tyr's vault and confronting Modi again, Atreus falling ill, taking taking him to Freya so that she could heal him, going back home to retrieve the Blades of Chaos, traveling to Helheim to obtain the Bridge Keeper's heart, healing Atreus, revealing Kratos' true origin, gaining the Black Rune, journeying back to the mountain, killing Modi, reaching the summit once again only to be interrupted by Balder, getting trapped in Helheim, discovering Odin's hidden chamber and Tyr's secret plans for others to get into Jotunheim, getting the dwarves to forge the key needed to open Tyr's hidden chamber, surviving all the traps within the chamber, flipping the temple, acquiring the Unity Stone, traveling through the realm between realms, surviving the Gauntlet Tower, entering the World Serpent's belly to recover Mimir's other eye, escaping the World Serpent's belly to fight Balder, piercing Balder with mistletoe, killing Balder, thus turning Freya against us, and finally reaching Jotunheim only to find out that all the giants are dead, was all part of a damn prophecy. Now that is a level of precognitive ability that I like to call some bullshit. This game is not really surprising anybody by foretelling Kratos' death. He's already died multiple times throughout the series, and has returned to life every single time. I guess there's just one thing I don't understand. My name on the wall. The giants called me... Loki? Nice try, game. But this plot twist isn't nearly as clever as you think it is. Anyone who can pick up on nuances and subtleties saw this coming a mile away. The fact that Atreus' face son, whose name is a play on Laufey, who is Loki's mother in actual Norse myth, when Mimir said that the world serpent thought the boy seemed familiar. The fact that every lore entry and story Mimir told never once mentions Loki. Balder being harmed by mistletoe, similar to how he was killed in Norse myth thanks to trickery by Loki. The fact that Atreus was able to communicate with the World Serpent, whom he's the father of in Norse myth, and the last part of the mural with Atreus walking with the wolves, most likely being Fenrir's skull and Hati, with Fenrir also being a son of Loki. He's here to talk to you about the Avengers Initiative and bait you for the sequel. But if you pre-order the Collector's Edition now, you can get the alternate ending where you team up with him to take down Thanos that leads into the final installment of this new trilogy called God of Infinity War. Boy, this way, boy. Slow down, boy. Find the edge, boy. We do what we please, boy. Boy, boy, look at me. Look at me, boy. 
Boy! Inside, boy. 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 More enemies, boy! Boy! Boy. 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 You will stay out of it, boy. Boy! You are in your head, boy. And we will go home, boy. No place for a boy. You must be smart or something, boy. You're a boy, aren't you? Come, boy. Come, boy. 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 Boy? Boy! Wait for me, boy! The boy was following my command. Boy. 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 The boy will want answers. Come, boy. Hang on, boy! Boy. They are spirits, boy. What was that, boy? Come, boy. 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 Boy, what did I tell you, boy? Focus up, boy! You must learn efficiency, boy. Ready yourself, boy! Stay back, boy. There are no good gods, boy. Boy! Not our concern, boy. What is it, boy? <gasps> Careful, boy. Boy! Behind me, boy. She is gone, boy. Boy! Oh, hold on, boy! Run, boy! Boy, you are seeing the end of a war, boy. You're not, boy! Do not stray from me, boy. Jump, boy! 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 Boy, read this, boy. Mind your tongue, boy! The main reason we are here, boy. Remember what I told you about expectations, boy. Come, boy. Remember what I told you, boy. You have potential, boy. 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 Come, boy. Batano, boy. Oh, boy. Calm yourself, boy. Calm yourself, boy. Boy. Wait, boy. 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 Steady, boy. Boy, check that path. Boy's mother is dead. Boy. Boy. Leave him, boy. Here, boy. Do as she says, boy. We are leaving, boy. Have I taught you nothing, boy? Here. Boy. 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 The ring's grief is of little importance, boy. Stop listening to the ring, boy. Silence that ring, boy. 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 Curiosity is dangerous, boy. Gods do not fall this easily, boy. This is life, boy. Guard your emotions, boy. You are too eager, boy. Boy. Here. Boy, boy, your emotions again, boy. You never answered the boy's question, Ed. Boy, boy, aren't they, boy? Boy, boy, oh, look wow. if you wish, boy. Boy, 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 the boy, boy. This fight is mine, boy. Stay behind me, boy. Boy, boy, whatever you feel, boy, we shall see, boy. I know how to read, boy. Brother, the boy. The boy has fallen ill! This boy is not your boy. You must say nothing to the boy. The boy has been cursed. Boy, you do not know everything, boy. I'm a god, boy. Your spirit lies to you, boy. Trust in his spirit to keep its word is foolish, boy. Hope is blinding your instincts, boy. You are naive, foolish boy. But do not take your disappointment out on me, boy. You should take it, boy. Yes, boy. Boy! Good boy! Left boy! Right, boy! Boy! That was cunning, boy. Boy, we are gods, boy. Watch your tone, boy. Keep your wits about you, boy. Do not push me, boy. Boy! Boy! Run, boy! Get out of here, boy. Calm down, boy! 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 I am your father. And you, boy. We are here because of you, boy. Boy! Turn away, boy. Boy. Here. Boy. 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 You might want to turn away, boy. No, boy. Please, boy. Boy! Boy! Well done, boy! Boy. Boy. Now, boy! This is between you and the boy. 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 Every corner of every realm 
and feed your soul to the vilest filth in hell. That is my promise. <laughs>